Hi friends, is rubber more elastic or steel? You must be thinking rubber, right? But according to physics, the answer is steel. Why? Let's go ahead and explore in this video. But guys, before we begin, just a quick reminder, do check out the courses on our website and Android app. Links are given below. Ready? Let's get started. When we look at motion in physics or Newton's laws of motion, for simplicity, we assume that the body is rigid. Rigid means that the shape or size does not change for the body. For example, if you consider this plastic ball, when I apply a force on it, the shape or size of this ball hardly changes. Of course, if the force is very large, so let's say you're Superman or Superwoman, then the ball shape will change or this plastic ball might break. Rigid bodies are an ideal case. But in the practical case, we know that bodies are not rigid. They can be deformed by a force and the force is called a deforming force. For example, if I apply a force on this stress ball, as you can see, it gets deformed. Or if I apply a force on this spring here, can you see the spring is getting deformed under the action of these forces which are called deforming forces. Now when we remove the force, as you can see, the spring comes back to its original shape and size. And same is with the stress ball, that when I remove the force, you can see the ball starts smiling again. It's back to its original shape and position. This property of a body by which it tends to regain its original size and shape when the applied force is removed is known as elasticity. And the deformation is known as elastic deformation. We can define elasticity in a different way. Elasticity can also be defined as the tendency of a body to oppose the change in its shape or size when the force is applied. For example, when I try to compress the spring here, it tries to push back and oppose a change in its shape. I can feel the force of the spring on my fingers here. So elasticity can be defined as the tendency of the body to oppose the change in its shape or size when you apply a force on it. However, if you take some mud or play-doh, so I borrowed some play-doh here from my daughters. So let me take out this play-doh here. And now if I apply a force to it, does it have any tendency to regain its original shape? No, the play-doh is lazy. The, it doesn't want to come back to its original shape and size. It gets permanently deformed like this. Such substances are called plastic and this property is called plasticity. So it's like the opposite of elasticity. In elasticity, substances have tendency to come back to their original position, like the spring and the rubber ball we saw. But if you take Play-Doh or mud, it gets permanently deformed. So this is a plastic substance and the property is called plasticity. And now the famous question, which one is more elastic, rubber or steel? Normally, when we use the word elastic, rubber is the first material that comes to our minds, right? From our experience, we have seen that when you squeeze a rubber ball or when you pull a rubber band like this and you remove the force, you can see it quickly comes back to its original position. Or when I squeeze this stress ball and I remove the force, it quickly comes back to its original position. So this makes us believe that rubber material is more elastic than steel. But if you take a steel wire and bend it, it will remain bent and not come back to its original position. So this makes us believe that rubber is more elastic than steel. But now, if I give you a steel spoon, is it easy to bend it? No. If you try to bend a steel spoon like this, or if you take a steel tuning fork and you try to deform it, you can see it is not easy 
to deform it and it quickly comes back to its original position. So if we use the second definition of elasticity, that is elasticity is the tendency of a body to oppose a change in its shape or size when force is applied, if we use that definition, which material is more elastic? This time will you choose rubber or steel? That's right, steel is the correct answer because steel has greater power to oppose the change in its shape or size when you apply a force in it. So by this definition of elasticity, steel is definitely more elastic than rubber. In fact, we need a very large force to deform it. Of course, these definitions hold only within a limit. So if you apply a very large force on rubber or steel, the object will probably break. So the force should be within a limit and that is called the elastic limit. So next time somebody asks you this famous question, which one is more elastic? Is it rubber or steel? What is your answer going to be? That's right. With confidence of physics, you can say the answer is steel. Okay. Because steel, as we discussed, is more elastic than rubber because steel more strongly opposes the change in its shape, right? It doesn't want to get deformed, whereas rubber gets deformed easily. I'm sure this question is coming to your mind. Why are solids elastic in nature? If we zoom into a solid, we know it is made up of tiny, tiny particles called atoms. The atoms are held together by interatomic forces. You can visualize this by considering the atoms to be balls here. Okay, So we are going to consider the atoms as balls and they are connected by invisible springs. But I am going to use a visible spring here. So we can imagine that the atoms in the solid are like this. right? So these red balls are your atoms and they are connected by these invisible springs. Now these atoms, these balls here, want to maintain an optimal distance between them. This separation is called the normal or equilibrium separation of the atoms. Now if we apply a force and we push these two balls together, so we, I'm compressing, right? I'm applying a force and compressing this solid so you can see the atoms are coming closer to each other. The spring is applying a force and it pushes the atoms back because the atoms don't like to come too close to each other. So as I apply this force, you can see the spring applies an opposite force, pushing the atoms back to their original position of separation. Or you can think that if I pull my solid, right? So if I pull my solid like this, so I pull my solid, you can see the spring is getting stretched and it is pulling the atoms back to its original position. So the atoms don't want to go too far apart or they don't want to be too close to each other. They want to be at the perfect optimal distance. And the spring is sort of balancing it out here, right? So whenever I compress it, the spring pushes back. Or if I stretch the atoms far apart, the spring pulls the atoms closer to each other. But obviously, guys, you know that there is no real spring connecting the atoms. These are all invisible interatomic forces. So there's no real spring here. There are just interatomic forces pulling the atoms together, or if we stretch them, uh, if we compress them, pushing the atoms, or if we stretch them, pulling the atoms together. Because remember, these atoms want to get back to their original equilibrium position. Now, why this equilibrium position is so important? because the potential energy of this system is minimum at this equilibrium separation. And remember, every system wants to have the minimum potential energy so that it's most stable, right? So same way, these atoms want to be at their minimum potential energy, which means their equilibrium separation. So with this uh, simple example of considering the atoms as balls, and connected by these invisible springs. I hope you've understood why solid materials 
like this steel spoon or even the rubber ball show the property of elasticity. So with this ball and spring example, you guys can understand or visualize the reason for elasticity. The elastic behavior of materials plays an important role in engineering design. For example, while designing a building, knowledge of elastic properties of materials like steel and concrete is important. So the next time you see bridges, ropeways, aeroplanes and railway tracks, remember that they are designed based on elastic properties of the materials. Elasticity of materials can be measured using a number known as modulus of elasticity. We will learn more about modulus of elasticity in a later video. Now I have an interesting question for you. Can you guys tell me which material is the most elastic? So this material will have the highest modulus of elasticity. So here are four options for you. Is it steel, gold, diamond or graphite? So guys, I want you to research this question and do let me know your answer by putting it in the comments below. So which is the most elastic material? Steel, gold, diamond or graphite? Do put in your answers in the comments below. I'm looking forward to reading your answers and I promise to reply to them. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and do check out the courses on our website manochaacademy.com and our Android app Manocha Academy because we have full courses on physics, chemistry, biology, maths, coding and artificial intelligence. In these courses, you're going to get live classes, concept videos, quizzes, questions, mock tests and revision notes. So guys, what are you waiting for? These courses are going to be perfect for your exam preparation. So do check it out. Links are given below and please do share it with your friends. And if you still haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, come on, hit the subscribe button right now and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. So stay connected with Manocha Academy and just keep learning.